Good morning, Vinyl community. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Um, man, I had a pretty good response to my last video. Um, wasn't expecting that, so thank you. Um, I guess people like, uh, I mean, I like top 25s and stuff like that, so that was the first time I ever done that, so looking forward to doing some more. Um, today's video is all going to be about uh, a box I just received yesterday um, from Vinyl Me Please. Here. Baseball season is upon us. Go Dodgers. I'm probably going to spill that in this video, but whatever. So, just got this box in from uh, Vinyl Me Please. I don't know if you can see the sticker there, but that is Tribe Records out of uh, Detroit, Michigan. So this is the, uh, I guess they call it their uh, anthology series. They made uh, a thousand of these. Um, it's uh, they call it the history of Tribe Records. And uh, yeah, so I jumped on it pretty early. Um, I don't know what anyone else's experience is with Tribe Records, but uh, here in Texas, it's pretty much non-existent. Like I could probably go my whole life and I will never see a Tribe record. So this was, you know, it was kind of expensive up front, but. To me, it was worth it because, you know, I'm never going to see these records. So, a um, little history of Tribe Records. It was started in the early 70s, I think 72, uh, by uh, Phil Ranelin and uh, Wendell Harrison uh, out of Detroit, Michigan. Um, you know, I'd be curious to know anyone in Michigan up there. I mean, do you guys see these records at all? Like, you know, in the stores? I mean, I've seen them maybe once or twice on Instagram for sale, and they're like $400. And I'm not paying that. I, you know, I just can't pay that for a record, so... I'd be curious to know if anybody finds these, you know, in the wild up in uh, Detroit. But anyways, so it started in Detroit, kind of a, uh, you know, Motown had shut down and they wanted to do something for the black community up there um, to, you know, bring their culture back in, you know, to the city um, after Motown. Like I said, Motown shut down. So uh, it was only around for about five years. Um, I think they had like eight records and I think six of the records are um, in this box, six of the eight. One of them I, I really wish would have been in here, but, you know, I didn't curate this box. Uh, I think Now Again Records helped out. Um, but anyways, so comes in this box. Um, nice Tribe Records tape. Kind of opens up like that. And here's how it's uh, packed in there. Pretty good packing, um, you know. They got specially cut foam just for this. It looks like um, a tribe membership card comes in it. Don't know what I'm really gonna do with that, but and then comes with this uh, story of tribe records. Really nice, you know, thick uh, cardboard here. I guess this is, this is their eighth anthology, um, but yeah, just like I said, started in 19, yep, 1972. Um, these were all remastered from the uh, original tapes by Bernie Grundman. Um, yeah, so they just kind of talk about uh, uh, pressed at GZ, which is not good. Not really, not really happy to see that they were plated at RTI. I don't know why they didn't press it at RTI, but. Hmm, GZ Vinyl is not my favorite for pressing. And I guess you can, uh, on the back side here, you can, you know, it's got those QR codes. You can get some more history. So, yeah, pretty neat. All right. And then it also came with this pretty cool sticker. Onto the records. I did pre cut the opening here to make this a uh, little bit easier. But so we got History of Tribe Records, A New Dimension in Cultural Awareness. I think I'm number 135 out of 1000, so pretty good low number there. 
pretty happy with that. All right, so it kind of comes out like that. Kind of some nice uh, artwork there on the, I don't know what you even call this, the folder. And for those of you who don't know, most of the music on here is going to be, you know, soul jazz uh, with some definite some free jazz influence, um, which is kind of where I find myself in jazz at this point. All right, so very nice uh, book here. Oh, yep, just like I thought from Bonnie Me Please and Now Again. I think it's, uh, what's his name, Egon over there? Just some, I heard some pictures are in here. Some pretty cool pictures. Uh, maybe some magazine ads or something it looks like. John Coltrane Memorial. Looks like maybe just some flyers that they put up around town. $3 to go see a show, a Tribe Records show. Oh, there you go. So that's why they had the membership card, I guess. So, yeah, pretty nice uh, book. I'll definitely be reading that here in a little bit. All right, so the first record up is, uh, I believe this was the first record ever um, put out by Tribe. Uh, this is A Message from the Tribe. Phil Raylin and Wendell, Wendell Harrison. The jackets are really, really nice, really thick. I'm not going to do this for every single record, but very nice. Replicated the original label there. Vinyl looks uh, really nice and pretty clean, actually, for coming. From the factory, so I'm hope I hope GZ Records did good on this one because this was a lot of money. So very cool, definitely. I'm gonna I'm gonna probably just go in order of how you know how these were put out here. So definitely gonna start with that one. All right, next one. These covers are just really cool too. Uh, Wendell Harrison, "An Evening with the Devil." And a lot of the musicians, they all played on each other's albums, so even though it's a Wendell Harrison album, I think you're pretty much getting, um, you know, yeah, Marcus Belgrave, um, Charles Moore, a lot of these artists, you know, appeared on other, um, other Tribe records, so looking forward to that one. Next one, Phil Ranelin, The Time Is Now. Wendell Harrison, Charles Moore, Harun El Nil, uh, Billy Turner, and Keith Vreeland. Pretty cool cover. Next one, uh, this is definitely one that, uh, you know, a cover I've seen quite a bit, but um, I'm not sure if this is his family or not, but this is Phil Ranelin, Vibes from the Tribe. See the pictures with uh, some kids there. I believe that's probably his family, if I had to guess. It says on the front, in dedication to the family and for the children, our future. So, pretty cool. And they just feel feel really nice Harold McKinney voices rhythms of the creative profile pretty cool pictures of uh, some of the musicians on there Sure, all these have the same. Oh, yeah, that one's got the blue tribe label. Pretty cool. Uh, 
Uh, this one I have seen before. There's actually a, I think it's an unofficial repress of this that I almost bought. It's got like a color. Um, this whole drawing's in color, but Reflections of the Sea of Nernan. Green label. And this last one is supposedly a unreleased album. It was never put out on vinyl. A couple of the tracks were uh, put out on uh, 45s, but uh, yeah, they never made it to you know an actual album. So this is supposed to be unreleased material um, from Tribe Records, which is crazy. So this is Wendell Harrison, Farewell to the Welfare. Which is, probably explains why the cover is so different than the rest of them. So this is pretty neat. Um, you know, anytime they have new material from Tribe Records is something pretty special. Uh, let's see who's on this one. Probably the same musician. It doesn't even really say. I don't really want to read all that right now, but really looking forward to listening to this one. So, pretty neat. I wonder what label they got on this one. Oh, I got like a, a blue one again. So that was kind of a big draw to the box set as well as you're getting this album that was never released. So, it's pretty cool. So that is it for the uh, box set now. There is an album I wish they would have included in this. It's uh, Gemini 2 by uh, Marcus Belgrave. You know, I, I know they couldn't get all of them in here, which I don't understand why. I mean, it was two, two extra albums. They could have, you know, had all the records from Tribe Records, which really would have made sense. You know, I don't know if the original tapes were really jacked up for that album or what's going on, but... I really think that they should have included every album being as it was less than 10 records, you know, it was only eight records, so you would have had nine in the box with the unreleased one. That's my only disappointment with the box set. Like I said, I'm really happy with it. Uh, I can't wait to play them um, and see how, you know, how they sound, uh, especially, you know, I'm not real happy with, like I said, being pressed at GZ, uh, really not a good record label, but, uh, and then I also, Came with, it also came with this. Oh. Do I want to take all this out? I don't know if I want to take this out, but this is a, a poster of Tribe Records. Um, I'll take it out real quick. I don't know if this was like you got it for the first 24 hours or you know what the deal was, but I'm definitely going to frame this, put it on the wall here in the music room. Pretty pretty nice uh, poster here. I think they had a copy of it in the book there, but it looks like a concert from uh, November 26, 1971, 8 to 10.30 p.m. Detroit Institute Lecture Hall. So, yeah, really looking forward to getting this framed up. It's on really nice cardstock here. And uh, yeah, that was, I think, just because I ordered within the first day or two, um, they gave me this, so. Very, very cool. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Hope you enjoyed the, uh, you know, little unboxing here of the Tribe Records set. So that's all I got for you. So uh, take care.